Thanks be to God. Good morning. So good to be amongst you guys again. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this menu carefully designed for all of our being. We thank you for the ways that you call us into community, that you call us to share peace, that you call us to sing, that you call us to remember. And yet we get to the entree of hearing your word and being elevated to go higher and further in our spiritual journey. Continue to open our hearts, get our hands ready, and speak to our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to use for a sermon theme this morning, be last, be last. Japan's Uta Abe, the reigning Olympic champion, in the 52 KJ, KG judo competition returned this summer. Abe and her brother had both won gold at their home Olympic in Tokyo in 2020, just 30 minutes apart. The 24-year-old athlete had not lost a fight in an individual competition since 2019. She rose to prominence after winning her first senior gold medal at just the tender age of 16 years old at the 2017 Judo Grand Prix, thus becoming the youngest IJF senior competition winner in history. Her and her brother came to the Olympics this year to do one thing, to win first place to take home the gold medal. But a, a twisted fate awaited Abe. Abe was confident when she showed up in Paris. She breezed through her first round, beating Canada's Kelly Deguchi. She started well against her second, scoring a Wasa Ari in the second minute of the bout. But with exactly one minute left on the clock and things looking good for her, her opponent launched an attack grabbing Abe's back and throwing her for an epon. Abe sank to her knees, holding her head in her hands as she tried to come to terms with what happened. Now, sometimes you can see and you can taste victory, and then something different happens. She held her head in her hands. She saluted her opponent, which was the good sport thing to do, but she struggled to walk off. I remember this because it reached news. It's not unusual for a player, male or female, to cry when they don't win the Olympic. But this Abe, she sobbed uncontrollably. I don't know if any of you remember, to the point where she was shrieking and she couldn't even stand up on her own. She spent several minutes wailing in her coach's arm. Finally, they had to literally pick her up and carry her out. At the Olympics every four years, winning is important for many of the athletes that come. People have sacrificed years and hours of training to compete with some of the best athletes. I was looking at the ritual for just a gymnast who trains 40 hours a week. Athletes come here to do one thing. They come here to win. And they don't come to win little. They come to win big. Countries are watching their representatives back home, looking at their representatives, rooting. There's all this camaraderie. They have left home to represent their country and bring home the goal. It is stressful. and It is highly competitive. The passage today lets us know this whole notion of first place and greatest and best has been around for a while. It did not just arrive in our lifetime. Richard always knew he was smarter than his peon siblings. How did Richard know he was so much smarter than his siblings? His professor father, who valued intelligence, had a way of showing favoritism to Richard. He could see the brilliance in this child to the demise of all his other kids. Richard didn't mean to be a jerk, but he never had to work hard. Concepts and knowledge came easy for Richard. Any of you know Richard? He excelled academically. He often ranked at the top of his class. 
We value people at the top of their game. We value people that are smart. We value people that come in first place, that rise to the top. So in this this passage today, the disciples are arguing amongst themselves about who's the greatest, who's in first place. Can you imagine this conversation? Peter stands up and stretches. So I was thinking, guys, since Jesus did say, I'm the rock, you know, the foundation and all that, maybe that makes me the greatest among you. And then John smirks, leaning back against a tree. Sure, Pete, but I'm the beloved disciple. You can be the rock, but rocks don't get hugged. Then Andrew joins in the conversation, interrupting, uh, uh, excuse me. I was literally the first one to follow Jesus. Without me, half of you wouldn't have even been here. I practically started this whole disciple thing. Matthew grinning, yeah, Andrew, but I gave up my wealth and cushy tax collector job. I sacrificed the most. You all left boats, but I, I left luxury. Thomas, whoa, whoa. Well, let's not get carried away here, guys. Sacrifice is one thing, but how do we know Jesus is even keeping tabs? There could be no rankings at all. Another disciple speaking up, well, it's not like I'm worried. People just can't stop talking about me everywhere I go. And this kind of conversation continues and continues. And each of them is making a case for being the greatest. Then later, Jesus asked them, what were you guys talking about on the road? You all really seemed engaged. And things get quiet. No one speaks. In a youth program, there is often drama among the kids. It's part of their development. Gary runs up to the teacher to report that another kid is treating him badly. And without missing a beat, the instructor says, and what did you do? What did you do, Gary? Gary looks shocked. He didn't come to report on himself. He didn't come to get himself in trouble. The instructor had been, however, observing Gary too. I imagine when Jesus asked this question, of the disciples, it is like Gary having a flashlight that shines on him. A flashlight shining on them. What were you talking about? Jesus likely had also been observing them and already knew. So this business about being in first place, the road less travel, is be less. Imagine them hearing those words. How do those words feel to you? Be last. When's the last time you heard someone give you spiritual advice and say, be last? I was listening to a young adult talk about pledging her sorority. And she was saying for sororities, there are a top, there's a middle, and there's a bottom tier to sororities. I didn't know that. This particular girl had transferred in from a community college and was looking for sisterhood. She was looking for friendship. She didn't research to find out what the top tier sororities were or what were the ones that were on the bottom. She really connected with one female in one of the sororities and decided that her vibe felt good with this group. And so when it was time to put her bid in, she put it in for this sorority. Now, after she got in, she learned that her sorority was a bottom tier sorority. For her, as she observed, the noticeable difference was that the male fraternities would pay more attention to the top tier sororities. Basically, she said, you would get ignored. So a frat guy could be talking to you, but when he learned that you were in a bottom sorority, he would nicely, nicely walk away. Since no one really expected much of them as a last sorority, Their calendars were never full, and they got to experience, according to her, the joy of friendship. Since the competition was to get to the top, they were free to live their lives uninterrupted because nobody cared. Be last. Jesus had some ideas 
in the text today about being last. For starters, be of service to all. Treat kids as human. Treat those who are marginalized with care and respect. Treat those who society has forgotten like royalty. Treat those who the city would rather they disappear as queens and kings. Embrace our youth. A lady is out ordering food on a Friday night. She's worked all day and she's ready to cash. And so she goes to order some JJ fish. And while she's there minding her own business, a young girl with Down syndrome is looking at her. The girl opens her arms up, indicating, come here, get the hug. The lady looks around at first wondering about this invitation from this girl that she doesn't know. She looks back at the girl who is still there with her arms extended waiting. And finally, the lady goes over and is hugged by this girl. It's not that simple perfunctory hug, you know, the hug we do where we nicely tap one another, lean in, and let one another go real quickly. No, when this girl hugs her, she holds on to her tightly. And in that little girl's embrace, the middle-aged woman finds warm tears springing down her face. There is wonder and mystery and beauty in the things and situations and people we often overlook. Be last, hang back, discover the wonder, see the children. Jesus shakes up things like that for the disciples. If you want to be great, consider being at the bottom. Consider being at the back. Consider being last. I took this group on a youth trip to Iowa, and it was a weekend of fun that we had laid out for the teens. There was this bridge made of wood slats that basically swung and moved when you walked over it. And you walked over it, suspended over air between kind of two hills. You kind of looked down into the valley. And I was somewhere in the middle, making my way over. But in the back, the last folks were dealing with a situation. There was one child that was afraid to cross. In the black of the line, in the back of the line, you can see it all. In the back of the bus, you can see it all. In the back of the classroom, you can see what is going on. You can observe who got left behind. You can see who's having a hard day dealing with their fear. In the back is where things are more authentic and visible. A rich place for this dialogue about being last is driving. When I come to work now, there's construction that exists on the south side, headed north, as you exit off of Garfield. It was a little bad today with the rain, but not as bad as the weekdays at 9 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 7 a.m. when people are trying to get to work. In the middle of the rush hour, it's like there are all these cars backed up trying to exit on Garfield. And so there are a few that grow impatient with the process. They grow impatient with the line. And so you know what they do, right? And some of you may be this person. They speed up. What do they do? They drive past all the cars that are sitting there waiting patiently, right? And at the last minute, they try to scoot back in at the front of the line. Sometimes they are met with a little bit of resistance by others who think the audacity of you after all of us have been waiting. But then there are others, I imagine, who have had some experience with last, who let the driver in. If it's that important, please go ahead. Get to where you're going. There are some folks who are OK with last, letting multiple cars jump in front of them. Be last. Being last doesn't come naturally for us humans. Our country is built on placing one people's needs over that of an other. Domination and ruthlessness are a part of our modern day history. And yet Jesus is encouraging us to think about greatness differently. Dr. Paul Farmer was on his way to becoming a renowned doctor. He had a life challenging experience when he took a trip to Haiti. It led him to choosing to serve the poor in Haiti. He formed what is called now Partners in Health 
and raise massive amounts of money to bring supplies over to Haiti to get treatment to citizens in Haiti. He didn't just treat patients, but he often carried supplies to the remote villages on foot. He visited patients in their home to ensure they were getting proper care. And he spent hours advocating for systemic change in global health policies. He flew often to Haiti and Peru and even Rwanda, but he lived humbly. You probably haven't heard of him, and you know why? Because he insisted that what he did was not about him. His approach wasn't just to give medicine, to, but to respect and uplift the Haitian people who are often seen as last in our society. He knew, like many in Ohio, that Haitians are hardworking, respectable people. You want to be great? Serve those who have been overlooked. You want to be great? Let that inpatient car in. You want to be great? Serve those who have no voice. You want to be great? Take a step back. You want to be great? Give hugs to those who are often shunned. You want to be great, reach across the boundary to embrace someone that is different and not like you. It is serving others that makes us great. So the message for today is simple, and yet it's hard. Be last. Amen. <laughs>